other examples of MFIs offering such products already? Yes, there are. And I like that question because it gives me a chance to talk a little bit about Gramine 2. Gramine is famous. It was famous even before Dr. Yunus and the Gramine Bank won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006. But surprisingly, Gramine's latest work is not as well known as I and some others would like it to be, which is why Microsave asked me to look carefully at so-called Gramine 2. Because Gramine 2 is precisely the kind of set of products that I think do go a long way, not entirely, but do go a long way towards solving those three main problems that I think do face the poor when trying to manage their money. Gramming started, as we all know, as uh, an organization that lent mainly to women and mainly for one single purpose, micro-enterprise development. But Gramine 2, which was launched at the beginning of this century and is their standard uh, offering now, is much more varied and perhaps importantly offers all the various products at one place, at one time, very close by where the villagers live in these little meeting groups. So what are the main product offerings that Gramine has that help with these three main problems. First of all, it now has a fully open access passbook savings account. The clients of Grameen Bank can put in as much as they like at each of the weekly meetings, and they can take out as much as they like whenever they like. And they know that it's reliable. Reliability is really the thing above all that MFIs should be offering in order to do better than the informal sector. And then it has its loans that it's always had. Grameen Bank has always wanted that its loans should be used for microenterprise establishment and uh, management. In fact, Grameen borrowers have always used Grameen loans for a wide variety of uses. And the main reason for that is that what Grameen does is to allow you to pay back a really good-sized lump sum of money in very small bite-sized weekly repayments over a year. So it gives you reliably a chance to turn a long series of small payments that you can save out of your, your regular household cash flow into a large lump sum which is offered you as a loan on an annual basis. And that really is the magic of Grameen Bank. The magic of Grameen Bank and its lookalikes is not joint liability. It's not the fact that they work only with women. It's not the fact that the loans are mainly supposed to go into microenterprise. It's that it simply offers an opportunity for poor people reliably and regularly and frequently to turn a series of small payments into usefully large sums that they can use for any purpose including the kinds of purposes we were talking about, such as the emergency purposes and the need for large sums of money for life-enhancing assets and other, other life cycle needs. And thirdly, and I think this really is the game changer in Bangladesh, Grameen Bank are offering a long-term recurrent or commitment savings account, an account into which you place more or less fixed amount of money on a monthly basis for a period, a term of up to 10 years, and build up reliably over a long term, really large lump sum of money that really is big enough, perhaps to take care of a major expenditure that the household either needs to make or aspires to make. When you have those three products all together in the same place, chance to save up over a long term, the chance to use reasonably large size loans for any kind of purpose, plus a passbook account that allows you to take care of things on a day-to-day basis, then you're getting as close as I think anybody has got so far to offering a, a good set of basic financial tools to poor people. It's not to say that that's the end of the story. There's lots more that needs to be done and will be done. But uh, I think Gramming to is in a way the kind of state of the art of the first decade of the 21st century. 
Immodestly at this point, I would like to mention the little organization that I myself founded in Dhaka in 1996 called Save Save. This was a, a deliberate attempt on my part to try and offer something that responded to the learnings that I felt I had made by the years I'd spent looking at how poor people manage their money. And this is a, a small MFI in which we, as far as possible, respect these basic principles of flexibility and immediacy and frequency. So it's an MFI that works through daily collectors, staff that visit each and every client on a daily basis, and on each and every occasion, each day that they visit the client, the client has an opportunity to save a little, withdraw a little, repay a little on a loan, pay an interest payment on a loan, or if it's one of the days when the $2 a day is not coming in, to do nothing on the assurance that the next day the collector will come again and there will be another opportunity to salt away a little bit out of their cash flow, either into a savings vehicle, and we offer both short-term savings and long-term savings, or to repay a loan on a lump sum that they've taken, which they can use for any purpose they like. Interestingly enough, although Grameen popularized and massified this commitment savings device, this recurrent savings device, when it brought in Grameen 2, uh, it had actually already been well tested in Bangladesh, notably by one of the mid-size MFIs of Bangladesh called Buro, which had been running these kinds of uh, long-term savings accounts and demonstrating that they were popular and useful to people for many years before Grameen did. How might E or M banking play a role in developing these products? Not exactly sure yet how they will, because these things are in development, uh, luckily in a very rapid pace of development at the moment. But I'm sure that they're going to be extremely useful, because I'm sure they hold within them possibility of respecting these key principles that I've been repeating several times during this interview, these principles of flexibility, immediacy, proximity, frequency. The example I often give in Bangladesh is that if I ask a rickshaw driver to save 10 taka, he'll probably put his hand into his top pocket, and take out 10 taka and save it. If I ask him to do that once a month, he'll save 10 taka a month. If I ask him to do it once a week, he'll save 40 taka a month. If I ask him to do it once a day, he may save as much as 300 taka a month. So having some instrument there that allows him to make those payments on a regular and frequent interval, this is the trick that maximizes poor people's ability to intermediate as much of their cash flow as, as possible. And that's what you need to do if you're poor. You need to find ways of intermediating as much of your cash flow as possible in order that you are building up reserves or building up rights to loans in the future. Oh, 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 oh,